very good day to you. It's just wonderful to be with you again on family time. You know, my dear friend, there's a lot of wounded, hurting people in this world. And our Lord Jesus Christ has told us that we need to comfort them. Comfort my people, the Lord says. But you know, there's a scripture that I want to share with you out of the book of Isaiah, if you have your Bibles with you. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 1. But before we go there, verse 2 is a scripture that the Lord impressed upon my heart many years ago when I started preaching. And basically what it says in a nutshell is preach to the heart of Jerusalem. Not the head, the heart. Now I've told you before for all those hunters out there and those naturalists, when you go out hunting in the bush, the most dangerous animal to hunt is the African buffalo. In Zulu we call him Nyati. He is the most dangerous animal because he's got that big horn and that boss in the front. And if you shoot him in that boss, he's not going to drop. It's thick, thick bone and uh, horn. So what you do with a, an African buffalo, especially a big uh, a bull, is you shoot him through the heart and then he'll drop like a, a ton of bricks. The Lord says, preach to the heart of Jerusalem, not the head. And I think where a lot of problems come, especially with preachers, and especially when they preach in the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is actually the gospel of love, they preach to the head. They try and win a man to Christ through an argument. Now, I want to tell you, you'll never win anybody to Christ through an argument. You've got more chance of winning him to Christ through losing the argument <laughs> than you have through winning the argument. Because what people do, they just stick their, their heels in and they say, no way, that's your opinion and I'm not interested. But when you start preaching to the heart of a man, then you win him over for the Lord. Now let's just go to the scripture where the Lord tells us to comfort his people. I'm reading from the book of Isaiah chapter 40 and verses 1 and verse 2. Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her. Okay, speak to the heart of Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity, her sin is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Comfort my people. We need in these days, ladies and gentlemen, we need to speak comfort to people. People don't need to be beaten. They get enough of that every day in the street. They need to be comforted. Now, I've read a, a beautiful reading from an anonymous uh, writer, so I can't even tell you who it was. And he says that the world is hurting and needs comfort. But before we take on this very, very lofty ministry of comforting people, we need to be trained. Now, I really want you to listen to this message. I hope you've got that cup of tea there. You've closed the door, turned off the cell phone. You need to hear this. Because a lot of you don't understand why you go through times of suffering. A lot of you don't understand why as believers, I'm a born-again Christian, I'm baptized, I'm a member of a church, I'm tithing, I'm doing everything, but I'm going through suffering. Now listen, this might be an answer to one of your questions. The writer says, before you can take on the lofty ministry of being a comforter, and by the way, that is for everybody. Whether you are five years old or whether you are 85 years old, you have still been told by God to comfort His people. Now, in order to comfort somebody, you need to be trained, just like a nurse has to be trained. Listen to what he says. He says, this training program is ex very expensive. It's very costly. Because to be effective... We have to be able to endure the same afflictions that we are trying to comfort the people from. Do you understand what I'm saying? In other words, if you want to try and help a man who's got a broken leg, you need to understand what it feels like to have your leg broken. You see, 
Some of the, the people who have got the, who are the least effective in this ministry of, of comfort are people who have never been sick, people who have never suffered, people who have never lost anything in life. You see, their, their, their uh, procedure is as follows. They go into the hospital ward. They say, how are you? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All the Christian knees, <laughs> technology. I always remember Richard van der Berg when he made that movie, Faith Like Matthias. He said, we want to try and keep all the Christian knees out of this movie. We want it to be real and tangible. Now, listen, don't get me wrong. Don't be offended. I also say praise the Lord and hallelujah. But when you're speaking to somebody who's lying in a hospital bed and he is in incredible pain and he's never met Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. So when you say I've been covered by the blood, he doesn't understand that. Okay, that's some gory kind of statement which he doesn't understand. And the last thing he wants is for you to go in there and say, now listen, pull yourself together, open your Bible, quote a whole lot of scriptures to him, Okay, anoint him with oil, put your hand on his head, pray for him, and then walk out. What kind of comfort is that, folks? I pray for the sick, and I always anoint the, oil, uh, the sick with oil, and I always pray the prayer of faith. But the Lord is not talking about healing. He's talking about comforting. When you get an old lady who's been married for 60 years to her childhood sweetheart, and she is totally broken, I know one of them. She lives on a farm right down there in the Colesburg area in the Karoo. One of the most wonderful Christian women I've met. And her husband was an amazing man. Taught me so much about horses. And he died in a tragic accident. He was killed actually while he was riding a, a buggy with two horses. That lady, when she lost her loved one, she doesn't want a whole lot of Christian counseling. You know what she wants? That's right. She wants comfort. She wants you to be able to go into that house, put your arm around her small little frame and give her a close hug. And when she starts to weep, you weep with her. Not crocodile tears, real tears. Why? Because you know what she's going through. And that is why we have to be trained in order to give real genuine comfort. Yes, by all means, leave her a scripture as you leave and also pray for her. But what she wants is comfort. You see, it's comfort. It's the, it's the balm of Gilead. I can, if you can just think of somebody sitting there full of, of roasties. Now, for those of you that are not from South Africa, that's when you get your skin grazed and it's raw. If you've been playing sport and you get tackled on a field and you get all the skin taken off, it's absolutely raw. Or you've fallen off your bicycle or whatever. And somebody can bring nice, cool ointment, the balm of Gilead, and just put it all over those wounds. And they just seem to stop that gnawing pain. That's what people want. They don't want to have a harsh judgment. Well, brother, well, sister, there must be sin in your life. This is why this has happened to you. This is why your business has gone bankrupt. What, what kind of comfort is that? I think you get more comfort from the world. What, what comfort is there in bringing a bag of salt and rubbing it into those wounds? I tell you what, it'll drive that person mad. The Lord says, comfort my people. He says, speak to the heart of my people, not the head knowledge. So don't go there and try and be a wise man and explain to that person why they are in that predicament. That's not what they're asking for. They're asking for comfort. No, well, I think this has happened to you because, you see, you have not been tithing. Well, I think this has happened because, you see, you haven't been serving the Lord. Folks, that is not comfort. That is called condemnation. And I want to tell you right now, it comes straight from the pit of hell. Remember, it's the devil that condemns people. It's the Lord that convicts people. Okay? If they ask you, why do you think this is happening? You can be honest and say, I don't know. By the way, that's also an answer. You don't always have to be super religious. You don't have to know the answers because you're not God and neither am I, okay? So we're going to comfort our people. Now, in order to do that, we need to go to boot camp, as they say. We need to go to a training session. And this is where the painful co uh, thing comes. And that's why the writer says, you know, it's a very, very hard course. 
that we walk on. Because we must be prepared, that's right, to endure the same afflictions. Otherwise, how will you know how that person's feeling? And how will you know how to love them? Our own life becomes the hospital ward. Have you thought about that? When we are taught, and where we are taught the divine art of comfort. That's right. That's right. Now you're not so keen to be a comforter. <laughs> I understand. I understand because I've been to that, that course. Not once, many times. My dear friend, the things I'm talking about today, you will never learn in university. You'll learn through adversity, yes, but not university. You'll learn it from the school of life. And that's why people get old and you see these wrinkles. I always call them war maps. They don't come just because I'm getting old. They come through adversity and hardship and pain and suffering. Okay? So we need to learn. I want to tell you about a person that taught me much about comforting. I'm talking about my own dear mother, my mom. My mom was a sickly person as long as I can remember. She was as asthmatic. She had problems with her blood pressure. She had all kinds of sicknesses all her life, as long as I can remember, till the day she died. But you know one thing about my mom? If I was ever sick as a schoolboy, as a youngster, my mom would nurse me. She was a housewife. She never went to work. She stayed at home for the children. You know, I used to enjoy being sick. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> I used to actually enjoy being sick. My mother comforted me in such a special way. You see, because she knew what it was like not to be able to breathe properly in the middle of the night because of a chest infection, because she knew what it was like to have a severe migraine headache, because she knew what it was like to have a broken limb, she would sit with me, my dear friend, half the night. She'd give me a hot toddy. She would rub my chest with Vicks. She would take a sponge if I had a fever and she would mop my brow. She would hold my hand, not for 10 minutes, but for two or three hours until I went into sleep. She would go back to her bed, she would sleep for half an hour, she would be back again. Are you alright Angus, would you like a drink? Can I make you a cup of tea? Oh, I want to tell you friends, that comfort, I will never forget that. But my mother had to go to a very, very stiff training camp in order to get the qualifications to be able to comfort others. Many people came to my mom for comfort. Many people who had messed up in their lives, they'd been through a divorce, they were involved in an affair. My mom would sit them down, give them a cup of tea and just talk gentle things to them. They'd break down and weep. And after they'd had a good cry, many of them would be convicted and go back and sort out their marriage. And they would be healed. The Lord says, comfort my people. The Lord says, preach to the heart of a man, not to his head. And you'll see the difference. If ever this world needed comforters, it's now. But it comes at a price. We have to go to boot camp. We have to go to the school of life. So we need to be wounded sometimes. That's right. And we need to allow the great physician to come and to bind up those wounds of ours. So that we know how to do it for others. I want to tell you something that's always very painful for me to speak about on this program. And many of you know me and I love you so much. I feel like I'm with family today. When I lost my little nephew, he fell off that tractor that I was driving 25 years ago, by the way. Can you believe that? And it was as real to me as yesterday. I will never forget it. How can you forget something like that? I want to tell you that it was interesting to see the people that came to comfort me. And you know, folks, I say this very sadly, because I am a believer. It wasn't always believers that comforted me. A lot of them were people in the world. And you know what they said? Nothing. That's right. They didn't know what to say. I remember one young farmer in this district, a very successful man, a wonderful man. He's still a dear friend of mine today. He phoned up. He said, I need to come and see you. We sat in my farm office, which is just on the other side of this hedge. And he came in there to comfort me. And he sat down there and he opened his mouth and he just started bawling. 
He could not stop crying. The tears were running down his face. He took his floppy hat off and he started wiping the tears from his face. And he kept saying to me, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Angus. You know that that comforted me? It was like that balm of Gilead just started to wash over my, my broken heart. And he just came and put his arms around me and he just held me. I was actually the one that comforted him. But he did so much for me. First of all, he had the courage to come and visit me. You know, I would drive down the main street in Greytown. And people that I knew well, and I understood fully, I wasn't criticizing anybody or judging anybody. They would see me coming down in my, in my pickup, driving down the main street, and all of a sudden they would be looking down at some accounts or letters that they were opening. They could not look at me. I'd be walking down the street, I'd see a man coming up from the other side of the street, and he would just walk into a shop. I knew that he had nothing to buy in that shop. He couldn't face me because he didn't know what to say. I want to say something to you today. I don't know who you are or where you're at. You don't have to be a professional counselor to comfort people. That arm around the shoulder, that kiss on the cheek, those tears will mean more to people than all the fancy preaching under the sun. I believe that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I don't believe that He counseled people that were hurting. I believe He just loved them, just like God loves us. But in order to be able to do that, my dear friend, you need to have gone to the cross. I read an article the other day about the cross. They say it's a beautiful ornament. Ladies wear it on their chest here in silver and in gold. It's embroidered on shirts and necklaces and, and uh, jewelry. But I want to tell you, it represents the most severe death that any man could suffer. Death on the cross. Jesus Christ knows your problems. He knows the wound that you're carrying. Right now, He is the one that can comfort you more than anybody else. So when you go to comfort somebody, you go and you tell them about Jesus. That's all. You don't preach to them. You tell them that what? You tell them that He's a God of love, that He's a God of forgiveness, that He's a God that understands pain and suffering. He understands also what it feels like to be totally rejected by people. He understands when you make a mistake because he realizes you're not perfect. That's why he came down from heaven to earth to show us a better way. So I just, uh, I'm coming to the end because I, I really do want to pray for you. I wonder why we have to experience such, you wonder why we have to experience such great sorrow. Well, it's so that we can be sensitive to people that are in a situation of sorrow. Because over the next 10 years, and mark my words, sir, madam, watching this program, mark my words. Over these next 10 years, you're going to meet many people that are in a state of sorrow. Because this world is in a terrible state at the moment. And the only way you're going to be able to comfort them is to be able to identify with them. The last thing you need to say to somebody who's taking strain is pull yourself together. That's the last thing they want to know. Because if they could, they would. But they can't. So be patient. Yes, you've got to be firm. We've heard all that stuff. Be firm and don't be sloppy in that. But I want to tell you something now. I know from my times of hurt and pain that just a, a physical action meant more to me than any three steps to uh, healing or whatever. You know, I had times of drought here. Okay, when men would come and help me. I had times of floods when farmers would come and help us. I had times when my tractors packed up and my neighbor brought all these tractors over. Never said a word. I just planted my crop for me. Never charged me a cent. That is comfort. Not coming and saying, well, there must be sin in your life. That's why you've been slapping. You haven't serviced your tractors. That's why they're broken. No, that, that doesn't help anything. Just brought these tractors over. Remember we always say on this program, faith has got feet. Faith is a doing word. And by the way, don't phone the person up. Go and visit him if it's possible. If it's not, write him a letter. You know something? A hand. When was the last time you received a handwritten letter? You never do, do you? You get an SMS. You get an email. But you know that handwritten letter is so personal. That person took time out to write it, put it in the envelope, put a stamp on it and post it. Practical comfort. 
I'm saying close him because we need to pray. We want to ask God to make us qualified comforters. And the best way to do that is to avail yourself to whatever God wants you to do. Listen to this. A man by the name of J.H. Jowett, J-O-W-E-T-T, said, <clears throat> We are comforted by God not to make us comfortable, but to make us comforters. I'll read that again. Isn't that beautiful? We are comforted by God not to make us comfortable, but rather to make us comforters. So as God has comforted you, madam, and forgiven you of all your sins, as God has comforted you, sir, and given you a new chance when you were in that bankruptcy situation and given you a prosperous business, it is now your opportunity to go and comfort others. And when that man says, I'll never make it again, you say, yes, you will, because I was in the same position as you. Maybe there's a divorced person who's feeling totally condemned today. I want to tell you, God hates divorce. That's a fact. But you know something? If you repent, He will forgive you. And He'll give you a second chance. And He'll make you a new man in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for my dear friend watching this program. Lord, often we don't have words to speak. We are not eloquent when it comes to speak. But every one of us can put an arm around a person that's hurting. Every one of us can shed a genuine tear. Every one of us can smile and make a cup of tea for somebody. Every one of us can write a letter. The spelling doesn't have to be perfect. Lord, give us hearts that are soft. Lord, let us comfort your people. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you until we meet again at Grassroots. Goodbye. Thank you for watching today's episode of Family Time with Angus Buckin. For more information about other material or events, please visit angusbuckin.com. Did you know you can connect with Angus on Facebook and receive regular encouragements and updates? Or you can follow Angus on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Angus Buckin. Don't forget to catch Family Time with Angus Buckin for five minutes every morning, Monday to Friday at 5.55 a.m. on ETV. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. What does it say? That's right. Jesus says, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. You know, the opposite to fear is faith. And how do we get faith? By spending time reading God's Word. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Spend time in the Word, and you'll become a faithful man or woman. Goodbye.